guys, I just want you to know I slept in French braids for you guys, so I would have like nice natural curls, but then it looked like a drowned rat, so you get a low bun today. Deal with it. <laughs> Before we start the video, I just want to let you guys know that I'm doing a little giveaway for 30,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for getting me to this point. It's just kind of crazy for me to even think of like 30,000 people in a room. That makes my heart want to just fall out of my chest. But I'm doing a little giveaway to celebrate, including some of my favorite like brands. Kaleidos Futures and Pelt in there, which you guys know I love. It's one person will win all the prizes on screen. And to enter, I will put that link down below. So go ahead and enter that giveaway if you want to win any of these things but thank you so much for getting me here hey guys it's julia welcome back to my channel so today's video is going to be a little bit of a special one that i've been planning ever since i started my low buy in early january but basically i've always wondered what like a favorites video would look like for me if i wasn't bringing in new items so today that's exactly what this video is i'm going to be sharing with you guys my current favorite like makeup and beauty items while i'm on my low buy it's pretty self-explanatory there's not really that much that's different about this one other than the fact that i have not bought a new piece of makeup in about two months. Before we start off the video, I want to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where you can browse through thousands of classes to find things that interest you and learn more about your favorite topics. Also, if enough people sign up using my link down below to get two months free, I'm actually going to make my own Skillshare class. I will do it within a month so that all the people who sign up using my link down below will get it within their two months free. I'm either going to do how to do like artistic makeup looks like these, I'll do a master class on like tips and tricks, or I can do something more along the lines of like content creation creation, how to take pictures, how to style like Instagram photos. So I will put that in the poll. Let me know what you guys want to see me make my Skillshare class on, but you got to sign up to get the class. I really, really love Skillshare classes. It's such a good way for me to spend my free time. I just feel like I'm being productive and learning something new while also getting to learn about something that genuinely interests me because Lord knows that calculus does not interest me. Thank you UCLA for that. You guys have noticed I've been posting these kind of like avant-garde sort of like blurry effect videos of sparkly things on my Instagram and a lot of you guys have been asking how I get that effect. One of the courses I took recently on Skillshare gave some tips about, about photography and after effects so I've been kind of learning how to better utilize both my DSLR and my iPhone camera which I've been using for those videos so if you want my secrets Skillshare is the place to get that but I'm super excited to be working with them today. The first 500 people to click the link down below will get a two-month free trial of Skillshare. It's on me, the house. Clicking that link down below and signing up is the best way to support me. So I hope you guys enjoy Skillshare. It's super easy, super user-friendly and there are so many courses between like personal finance and photography, creating content if that's what you're interested in. It's just a great place to learn because you guys know I'm all about that education. My mind. Oh. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. I think that's all I have to say full details of this look should already be on instagram but i will talk about the things i'm wearing on my face in this video and yeah i think that's it without further ado let's get into it okay i don't really know where to start off i just have a bunch of things sitting down in front of me i think i'm gonna start off with the glow that you see transcending from my cheekbone this is pretty much the only highlighter i've been wearing for the past like two or three weeks on instagram it's the ColourPop super shock highlighter in the shade your catch they came out with these big gigantic pans of super shock highlighters with the blush crush collection and this i think is probably the standout product from that collection i do love the palette um, and i have been using it pretty often it didn't make it into this video but i think this is my favorite thing from the entire collection just because um you know these just provide this really beautiful, like, wet-looking beaming glow. It's that same Super Shock Highlighter formula, but obviously it's in a big, gigantic pan, and you get this huge, beautiful mirror. So I really enjoy how this one looks. I just feel like it's one of the few, like, non-cream highlighters. It's still kind of like a creamy powder texture, but it's definitely still solid. And it melts so beautifully into the skin if you have powder on or if you don't, um, which I really never do on my cheekbone. It just looks like a cream highlighter on your face, but it's easy to apply because it's a powder so I just take pretty much any fluffy highlighter brush swirl it around in there and then buff into circular motions and it just creates this beautiful beaming blinding glow so this is what I have on my face today and what I've been wearing very often on my Instagram I believe they have one more shade for like medium to deep skin tones and this I think will suit anybody who's like 
fair delight. Also, the packaging is really pretty. You guys know I'm a sucker for like roses and stuff like this, and I just think this is a really, really awesome product. All right, next up for foundation, I haven't really been wearing foundation on a daily basis. More often than not, I've been going completely like foundation free. Um, so I would say I really only wear like base makeup products three out of seven days of the week. And those three days are Monday, Wednesday, Friday when I have lecture with the cute guy in there, so I gotta look cute. But for foundation products, I've really just been enjoying very, very skin-like things when I do feel like wearing foundation. So right now I'm currently wearing and testing out the Bite Changemaker foundation. This is not in the video to give like a final review. I'm still very much like in the testing phases of this product because I think I've worn it less than five times in total. But I am wearing it on my face today. I really like it so far. I think it's a beautiful skin like foundation. I had somebody in real life like look at my skin and be like that doesn't look like foundation and I would completely agree. I think in natural light this is one of the best foundations I've ever seen and I really think that natural light can be like the make or break test for most foundation formulas. Um what else? I posted this on my Instagram story an unfiltered picture of my skin with this one and asked you guys to like judge it without telling you guys what the foundation was and for the most part people like agreed with what I was already thinking in my head that it looks like Nice and skin-like. Not the dewiest foundation I've ever tried, but also it's like nice and just like lightly luminous, which is my favorite type of finish. I also think it's sitting really well on top of my skin texture right now. I do have a pretty massive zit right here on my forehead. A little bit of texture right there as well because it is midterm season right now, but I feel like it is really sitting well on top of the breakouts and not emphasizing them any more than they would need to be emphasized. So those are my preliminary thoughts on the Bite Foundation so far. I feel like I went into this with like a lot of expectations though, and I'm trying to unpack those and just look at it as a any foundation that I'd be testing out, but because I was so excited to get this one, I think that I am a little bit more inclined to like it. So I will be sharing a final review after a little bit more testing of this one. Usually my first impressions are pretty in the ballpark of what I end up thinking about the foundation, and so far I'm really enjoying it. And then before I got the Bite Foundation, the other like complexion product that I was using was the Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream. I have this little limited edition of Real Akuma packaging because I thought it was cute, but the regular one is in like a red bottle, and it's a pretty, pretty popular Korean beauty product. This I never really had any intentions of getting, but I was like in a Korean beauty shop in Hawaii, and I swatched it on the back of my hand, and I was just blown away with how it looked on the skin. Again, kind of like the Bite Beauty one, this just looks like your skin, but better. Generally, I associate BB creams with being like very light coverage, but I don't think that's always necessarily the case. I think a lot of the time BB creams and tinted moisturizers can kind of get mixed up when BB creams can pretty much be the level of coverage of a medium to full coverage foundation, but they still have those like moisturizing factors and nice skin effect properties that make them look so, so good on the skin. The only thing I will say is the shade range is awful. Um, most Korean beauty brands don't have very good shade ranges. They pretty much only cater to like very fair to light skin tones. Um, and the undertones on this are weird. So even though I do have one that like matches the level of lightness of my skin, the undertone is kind of like on the pink slash gray tone side. So I do have to mix this one to get it to work for me. But overall, I would say that these two actually have very similar finishes. So if you can't find your shade in the Misha one, I would recommend going for the Bite one. Or if you want a cheaper dupe of the Bite one, the Misha one's pretty good as well. By the way, I'm so Sorry if the light is going in and out. I'm filming with natural lighting as always, but um, my dorm is in this like weird spot where like only a certain <laughs> ray of sunlight gets in because it's blocked by another dorm building. Um, so the two big windows here are letting in intermittent amounts of light and it's kind of weird, but bear with me. Sun is a deadly laser. Next up, a current skincare favorite that I've been really enjoying. Um, so I've been testing out products from Good Molecules. Good Molecules is kind of similar to The Ordinary. They're, they're like really bare bones stripped down to an ingredients focus, which I think is really awesome and I really enjoy in my skincare products, but they're like super affordable as well. And I think that's something that I really like to see making skincare accessible to all people. So I've been testing out a couple of their like most popular products recently. And my favorite thing by far from their line that I've been using almost every night is the Good Molecules Overnight Exfoliating Treatment. This is an AHA and BHA serum and probably the most affordable and closest dupe I could find to the Drunk Elephant um, TLC Framboos Glycolic. It is a blend of 10% AHA and BHA, which I really like having combined AHA and BHA to target both like my acne and skin texture in one. As far as acid serums go, it is a pretty strong treatment, so I definitely wouldn't recommend this one for beginners. I think you do need to build up a tolerance to using stronger acids on your skin, 
but I've been there. So even though I am more on the like dry sensitive side, I can still handle this one. I like using this one all over my face if I want to get like some all over exfoliating action. Or sometimes I'll just take a tiny like drop of this, place it onto a pimple, and then stick one of those pimple patch stickers on top of it. And within like two to three days, my pimple is gone. So that's currently what I'm doing to treat this one right here. And I've used about 25% of it so far. I'm going through this pretty quickly because I've been using it almost every night. It's pretty much my daily nighttime serum if I'm not using retinol that night. So, so far I'm really enjoying this and I am planning to do a more full review of Good Molecules very soon, but this is my favorite thing from the line. This is a bronzer that I've had for a while, but kind of just got lost in my collection. I dug it out recently and I've just been loving this so hard. This is the Becca Sunlit Bronzer in the shade Bronze Bondi. These I remember being pretty popular around the time I started getting into makeup, so like 2017 era <laughs> and probably like one of the most underrated products in Becca's line. They get most of their attention for their highlighting products, but the bronzers, beautiful formula. It has a little bit of shimmer running throughout it, but it doesn't like pick up as a shimmery bronzer, which is like the one true thing I hate in life. I'm wearing it on my cheeks right now. I just feel like it gives you that like nice amount of warmth and a little bit of glow to your skin without looking like a shimmery bronzer. The tones of the Becca bronzers in particular are what I really, really like from them. They're not too orange, so you're not gonna look crazy. Oh, finally you're here, bitch. You got a dollar? But they're also not too like cool toned and muddy either and they just blend so soft and smoothly. Becca's cheek products always have a lot of dimethicone in them where I feel like that really helps them to blend very well into the skin and makes powder products look like cream products in the way that they like meld with the skin. And whenever I do like a kind of shot my stash type thing where I just dig out products that I've had for a while and just kind of stopped appreciating as much, I always find like a hidden gem product like this and just remember like, oh yeah, that has always slept. Sunscreen, the most important thing you can be putting on your face, period. My current all-time ultimate favorite sunscreen is the Crave Beauty The Beach Yield. That I love so much and I don't have it with me right now. I brought it home to film with and then I forgot to bring it back for this video because I forgot that I was filming this video in my dorm room. I'm actually currently using other sunscreens right now because I want to use this up so I can just continually repurchase the Crave Beauty one, um, but I do go through sunscreen pretty quickly, so that shouldn't be too much of a task. The Crave one is almost like a serum in that it just literally melts into your skin, no white cast whatsoever. It just feels like a really light, watery, textured moisturizer. And I especially like it if I'm not wearing foundation, because if I'm wearing foundation, I can cover up like a white cast that a physical sunscreen might leave behind. But if I'm not wearing foundation, I want something that's gonna truly just like melt into my skin like a moisturizer would. And the Crave Beauty one one does exactly that for me. It's also SPF 50, so I feel really, really protected. It does not break me out whatsoever, which I feel like is a big problem for me with a lot of like chemical sunscreens. And yeah, it's just really good. My favorite sunscreen of all time. All right, for the eyeshadow category, I have a few things I wanted to mention. First is another thing I don't have with me. It's the Naked Honey Palette from Urban Decay. I gotta say, I was really, really shocked that I enjoyed the Naked Honey Palette so much. Urban Decay for me has just been like there. <laughs> um, they haven't really come out with anything that I've been super excited about and I feel like they have really fallen off where they used to be a brand that I was just so excited to see fun, innovative releases from. But the Naked Honey palette was something that really caught my eye last year when it came out and instead of purchasing it immediately, which I feel like if I had purchased it immediately I probably would have gotten tired of it. I decided to hold off on it and instead I put it on my Christmas wish list. So I got that palette like months after it initially came out and as a result I was so so excited to open it. I've done quite a few looks with it as well as a get ready with me using it on camera so you can see it in action. I think it's just beautiful. You guys know I don't even like the Urban Decay regular Naked palettes. The only ones I like are the Naked Heat and Naked Honey because I feel like they really stepped up the formula first of all. The mattes are really really good in these palettes and in particular, if you really like kind of like mustardy toned, grungier neutrals, I think you'll really, really enjoy the Naked Honey palette a lot. I just feel like it really suits my skin tone a lot in general. I have a more yellowy undertone because I'm half Asian. I feel like it really just brings out the warmth in my skin. On the flip side though of loving yellow toned eyeshadows, I've also been kind of into like more blushy toned neutral things. So something I've dug out recently has been the Anastasia Beverly Hills Norvina palette. This and Soft Glam have been my two like current favorite Anastasia palettes I've been using. The Norvina palette is something that I like will forget about if I'm not using it or seeing it on 
on a consistent basis. Just because for me, it doesn't really have that collection permanence that the Modern Renaissance and the Soft Glam palette have for me. But like on a surface level, it's pretty much everything I want in a palette. It kind of has these like pink and blush and purple tones, but it also has neutrals, which I wear on a daily basis. I've been loving on this one recently just because of the incredible quality of the shimmers in here. Every time I use this again, I'm reminded of just how good the metallic shades in in this palette are. They're really, really one of the best formulas Anastasia's ever done. So yeah, really been liking this a lot in particular. I've been doing just kind of like a neutral shade in the crease. Sometimes I'll throw a little bit of bronzer in the crease and then deepen it up with some of the shades in here and then use one of these beautiful, insane shimmers all over the lid. And I just think it's a really nice, subtle, low effort, but still looking really, really pretty to look. But between this and the ColourPop Blush Crush palette, I've been getting a lot of use out of more like kind of pinky tone neutrals, which I think are my favorite type of neutrals. What's this? A sparkly glittery single eyeshadow that's not ColourPop Ritz? This is what I'm wearing on my lids right now. It's the only shadow that I'm wearing. I've been doing very minimal eye looks recently because I do have lash extensions in right now. So you can't really do as much eyeshadow, which for me, I don't mind right now because I'm just so busy in the mornings. But this is the Touch and Soul Metalist Sparkling Foiled Pigment in the shade Cream Peach. Mine got dropped and is crushed, which crushed my heart, but it's still usable, obviously, because it's more of like a sparkly, loose pigment shade. I can just kind of tap my finger into these kind of loose sparkles and just dab it on and it still works fine but this is beautiful it's kind of like a rose gold sparkle on the eyes but on me this pretty much like matches my skin tone so it just looks like pure like wet glitter i will flash some looks on screen where i'm using just this on my lids has it surpassed ritz no but i've had it in my dorm for the past two months and i've been using it very frequently so it felt like something i should probably mention in the video the next thing i want to mention is something that has been on my wishlist for a long time, but I just didn't want to bite the bullet because it was, it seemed like such an investment. But I decided to finally invest in a silk pillowcase. <laughs> best decision of my life. Basically, if you don't know, silk is proven to be really, really good for your hair health. It prevents a lot of breakage in your hair, which is a huge problem that I have. I'm finally at a place where I'm really happy with the length of my hair, but whenever my hair like gets to a certain length, it's also accumulated a ton of damage um, and breakage, which means I have to cut it down again, which I hate because I really don't like how I look with short hair. So I actually got two silk pillowcases, one for my dorm pillow, which I'm pretty much sleeping on most of the time and then whenever i go home i do have a silk pillowcase on my pillow at my parents house so this has been amazing i've just really noticed my hair feeling like a lot shinier and just looking really really good this silk pillowcase is from myk mix silk i believe i know there's a silk pillowcase and silk scrunchie brand at sephora called slip but those were always a little bit too expensive for me so i found a brand that has that same amazing quality but is a little bit more on the affordable side and then because i was liking the pillowcases so much i decided to bite the bullet and get some silk scrunchies as well life-changing life-changing. <laughs> I'm wearing it on my hair today. I will never go back to wearing elastic hair ties ever again. I tie my hair up every day when I go to the gym and I was worried about them like kind of slipping and not holding my ponytail up as I do like plyometric work and jumping. But even though they're so so gentle on the hair like they don't give me that like tugging sensation that I feel or like a tightness in my hair it still holds my hairstyle in place when I'm doing stuff so I don't have any need to like tighten my ponytail throughout the workout which is so annoying. This is not sponsored by any means of course these are things I got on my own volition. The brand did give me a code, so I will put that down below if you want to get a little discount on your silk thingies. Oh, but honestly, I think any type of like pure silk pillowcase or scrunchie system will work really well. Like I've criticized Tatcha quite a bit as a brand and some of you guys have like thought that I don't like Tatcha. I actually really like Tatcha a lot. I don't think a lot of their products are necessarily worth the money, but as a brand, especially with the Japanese influence, I love Tatcha. And this is probably my favorite product from their line. This is the Tatcha Kiss You Lip Mask, and I love it. It looks like a clear kind of petroleum jelly, but it is simultaneously just like the lightest, but still the most nourishing overnight lip mask or lip balm that I've ever used. A huge concern for me with like lip balms and lip masks like this is that it doesn't cause breakouts for me. A really common thing for me used to be getting breakouts around here on my chin. I thought it was like dietary related or maybe related to like something makeup that I was wearing, but especially after I switched out my lip balm at the time, which was the Glossier Balm.com, I don't know what my mouth is doing when I'm sleeping, but it's probably definitely opening and getting a little bit and getting transfer of this lip balm down onto my chin so that was breaking me out and this even though it is like a thicker lip balm which i really like i like feeling like my lips are sealed in and just like really juicy if it does get onto my chin i don't get these intense 
oily breakouts. This is a product that's made in Japan and a brand that's based in San Francisco. They source a lot of their ingredients from really, really high quality places. And I think you are paying for the quality of this lip balm. Did I fall in love with a $28 pot of jelly? Yes, ma'am. Glossier Future Do, I've just been loving so much. I've been trying out just like not really wearing primer very often. I pretty much just rely on my skin prep and my moisturizer sunscreen base to create a nice hydrating base for my foundation. And this for me, I've been thinking of it as like the last step in my skincare routine. So right after sunscreen, I put this one on. I guess that means it's kind of been my primer recently. <laughs> Whatever it is, it achieves the dew. This will create the most beautiful glass effect on your skin. So I've been particularly loving this on those days when I'm not wearing foundation because it makes my skin look like almost wet, but not in a greasy way, if that makes sense. But it's a really great multi-purpose product. I've also been really liking this tapped on top of a cream highlighter to just melt everything into my cheekbone. Sorry, a powder highlighter. So I'll put on a highlighter and if it looks a little bit too like stark or powdery on the cheekbone, take a little bit of this and take either a beauty sponge or just my fingers, then pat the future dew on top of that powder highlighter and it just melts into the skin and just gives you that more natural effect to your face. It's so good and I think the ambiguity of what this is, because it's called an oil serum hybrid i feel like a lot of people just don't really know what exactly it's supposed to do but for me it does multiple things it's a great primer but it's also a really good finisher product and just everything you need if you like glowy dewy skin <laughs> i am the ceo of anxiety induced insomnia so i am very very familiar with a neurotransmitter called melatonin which my body does not produce but i think melatonin may become the new cbd in skincare and that i think we're going to start seeing it a lot as like a trendy ingredient this is from a new brand at sephora called alpen beauty wild crafted active so it's very like botanical based wild ingredients that are active ingredients. This is their calming midnight mask with melatonin and wild dandelion. This one they actually recommend using as either its own moisturizer or on top of another moisturizer for extra moisture, which you guys know I'm dry, so I do that. <laughs> and it's paraben, phthalate, PEG, sulfate, silicone, synthetic dye, and fragrance free. It's also 100% recyclable and no animal testing. Also awesome. I really quite a bit. As I said earlier, I have dry skin, but it's also very sensitive, so I'm prone to getting very inflamed and red. This I like to put on and it has this nice like kind of cooling sensation and it really just calms down any redness I have in my skin. And then when I wake up in the morning with this on, my face just looks really even across in terms of color and texture. It's kind of interesting. I'm still not really clear on exactly what the melatonin is supposed to do. I think it's meant to calm down that inflammation, which I think if it, if that's what it's supposed to do, it's doing a really good job. I've been using the Crave Beauty Oat So Simple Moisturizer with this on top and I just think it just adds a little bit of extra nourishment and a lot of calming ingredients, which I think are great for my skin. Two more products. The first thing is from Grande Cosmetics. This, I believe, came in last month's BoxyCharm, and I've been testing it out and really, really enjoying it. It's the Grande Drama Intense Thickening Mascara with Castor Oil, and Castor Oil is something I actually use on my eyelashes as a lash growth serum. It's really good for conditioning your lashes and getting them to grow out nice and long, which is not 100% relevant because I am wearing extensions right now, but I really like that ingredient, and I think it's really interesting to see it incorporated into a mascara. This is lovely. If you really really like voluminous lashes i think you'll really enjoy this mascara a lot it's also one of the few mascaras that's not waterproof that also doesn't create smudging on my under eyes which is a huge problem for me and as far as things go i don't like paying a lot of money for mascaras i generally think that drugstore does mascaras better but this is like one of the two to three high-end mascaras that I would actually consider repurchasing. I'm just really enjoying this one right now. Obviously not wearing it right now because I do have lash extensions in, but when I have been wearing mascara, it's been this one. Final product is still the 4-3 Beauty Glisten Up Mist. I went through the entire full size that I had of this one and now I'm working through the tester. I've been using it as pretty much just your ultimate dewy setting spray. An amazing dupe for the Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist, but this just creates the most beautiful, glistening, luminous, dewy skin, but it's also not an oil-based spray, so it's not going to give you like that greasy look to your skin and give you an oil slick on your face. All right, guys, that is it. Those are my current favorites that I've been using on my low buy. Just makeup that I've been really enjoying lately. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It's been a long time coming, and I haven't filmed a favorites video in a long time, so very, very happy to be filming this one today. Thank you so much again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Again, please go check out Skillshare via my link down below. I get paid if you sign up so <laughs> if you like this video please give it a thumbs up make sure you are subscribed down below and also follow me on Instagram to see makeup looks like this
or not really this is a little bit too subtle for what i post on instagram follow me on twitter at julia mozzicato and if you made it to the very end of this video you get the bonus meme love you <sighs> yeah, I'm up. Hey, Kylie, Stormy, it's lit.